And welcome to the post-game show. This is the Coach Dick Cox with Michael Jordan here. <laughs> Carlos had a kid while we were setting up the camera. Thought he was Michael Jordan. I told him he should have signed a few autographs and all. Just think of the excitement, happiness you'd have brought that kid in thinking he met Michael Jordan. No, I didn't even want to lead him on. The only thing I have over Michael Jordan is hair. That's the only thing. But. Well, I, I don't have that advantage, so <laughs> they won't think that, though. But uh, that may have been the whole bright spot of the night for these kids. Uh, the Hornets came in, high expectations, trying to finish strong before the All-Star break, but back-to-back -back disappointing losses in games, basically, they've given away. And, and in the race this tight for that seventh, eighth, eighth place spot, you cannot afford to blow a 21-point lead at home like they did tonight and lose for a team that they're battling for a playoff spot with. Absolutely. And they found another way to lose this game again tonight and just, just had that feeling, though, just watching the game. They went up big, but give the Pacers a lot of credit. They kept on clawing into the game, and they finally took the lead at, right at the end, but the, those guys never gave up, and it's something it just seemed like the Hornets just had a lack of urgency. I guess maybe because of the All-Star break is almost close, and they just getting a little bit too relaxed, thinking they had two easy wins, and next thing you know, you lose two in a row just like that. So these guys need to, hopefully they can come out and finish strong against uh, Detroit right before the break. Your final score tonight was 103-102. The Indiana Pacers over the Hornets. And the percentage, the first team to 100, I think Alan Knight told me this wins over 90% of the time. Well, Al Jefferson missed the free throw that could have given Hornets the 100th point first tonight, uh, which he did have a chance to give the team a six-point lead late in the game and missed the free throw, kept the lead at five. They come down, hit a three. They come down and score again, and the Hornets are in trouble again. This is going to be a tough one to swallow. Last night's with hard to swallow. When you go up there and you lose to one of the three bad worst teams in the league, and that one to me looked kind of like a, a nonchalant type game, like we thought we were going to win the game tonight by just showing up, and, and you had a team in the fourth quarter last night that won the game more than them, and that's why the 76ers won. Tonight, Coach Clifford said that this team played third quarter as bad a basketball as they have played all season long. Said they looked uncoached, undisciplined, or unorganized and when they blew the 21-point lead. Yeah, they really did. They just came out and, and played sloppy. And another thing about the third quarter was when they, they had those guys in the foul trouble, they should have they quit attacking the rim was something I really didn't understand. They should have did more of that, getting to the basket, getting to the line more. But they just got a little bit too relaxed for them and, and just let the Pacers come back into the game. And, and they just trying to they put it in cruise control a little bit too early and it came back to bite them in the end. Like you said, the Hornets were shooting a bonus with just a little under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. There were 48 fouls called tonight, and it seemed like we went through a stretch where it was hard to get anything going for either team, but there was like seven straight possessions. A whistle was called on every play, though. But again, you're at home. You've got that advantage. But... I thought Indiana did a great job of pushing the basketball. They took the game to the Hornets. They pushed it down the floor, and there were several times the Hornets never stopped the ball and let them take it coast to coast laid up. Yeah, that's something they've this been struggling with all season long. Like the guards like to let the other guys get to the rim a little bit too much. You know, Big Al's not the greatest defender and rim protect out there. And missing, missing Biz McBiombo, that still hurts him because he, he does a little bit better job protecting the rim. So letting these guard, guy, the guards get to the rim for the Pacers will help them get back to the, to the game. They didn't really set up for a whole lot of jump shots. Took them when they needed to, but for the most part, getting to the rim, like always, can help you win a game. Second straight game or game and a half here that the Hornets had to play without Michael Kidd Gilchrist tonight. That he is out with a strained hamstring. Uh, Jeffrey Taylor got his first start of the year and I thought Taylor played well. I thought he was a good option there. Did he do anything really spectacular that jumps off the stat sheets? No. But he played calm. He played under control. Uh, he did score six points tonight though. Got some rebounds and, and I thought he did well though. And in my opinion, I think he's doing better than the man who is people we've talked about all year long Lance Stevenson cannot shoot uh, he's a member of the Apple Dumpling Gang, the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Now, he can pass it sometimes, though, but he was two out of seven shooting. And he just takes the team out and just puts up, you know, I think he and, and P.J. Harrison need to get together and, and start their own new episode of Wild Wild West. Yeah, Lance Steele's been struggling all season long. I kind of feel bad for him, but I'm slowly thinking that he's starting to play his way out of Charlotte, I think. Come to close to the deadline, he'll be gone. But yeah, he took a couple of bad shots tonight. 
did a got a few steals, did a good job defensively a little bit, but still he's just having a hard time scoring. And I'm I'm just thinking the chemistry's not right with the team. Maybe he's just not fitting in with these guys. But I, I slowly think he's playing his way out of Charlotte because he only played about 20 minutes a night. So a, a guy like that, he should be playing more. But the way he's playing with these guys, the way he doesn't fit in, I just think. He's just not fitting, fitting for him right now, so maybe he'll probably end up being traded before the deadline because there's been rumors about Joe Johnson coming to Charlotte. So I believe they'll find a way to make a move before then. And, and again, right now, too, uh, somebody has lied to the poor guy. He is not a shooter. He cannot shoot. Uh, open shot after open shot, clying, clying, clying right there, though. He's got to realize that. Uh, I was kidding with you about, you know, I used to put up a stop sign to my players and say, you cannot shoot outside the paint. Well, maybe Coach Clifford needs to put that up to him because he cannot shoot a wide open shot in the NBA. And, and again, you're basically at times playing five on four offensively because the man cannot shoot. Yeah. You know, Lance, he may be the type of guy that doesn't listen, though. He, he may do his own thing. I don't know if he'll listen to a stop sign or whatever it is. He's, Lance is going to try to do what he can because he's I like his like his skill set and everything, but he just, just seems like he's one of those wild guys that just pretty much does his own thing, but he just had another off night again tonight. I mean, he still finished with eight points and four assists. Did a pretty decent job, but he's still – Still struggling, but another guy they need to look forward to is stepping up his game is also Cody Zell. He really didn't give him too much as well. So two of those guys, those two key guys right now with all of those other injuries, both of those guys really need to step it up for him. Zeller only took three shots tonight, scored two points. Got a little bit better performance tonight out of Gary Neal. Gary Neal had 11 points tonight. He was four out of 11 shooting right there, so he still didn't have his stroke back down, though. But, uh, again, I thought it was a gutsy performance tonight by Brian Roberts, who was playing with a hurt shoulder tonight. A lot of people said they it was right before game time they decided he was going to play, and yes, he did play tonight. He had 19 points uh, tonight and also finished with five assists. So, again, this is guy I think has done a, a, a decent job at filling in at the point position for Kimball Walker. Yeah, Kimball, that was a big shoes to fill. You really don't expect another guy to come in and, and fill the role of one of the best players on the team, but he, he's doing Doing a really good job for him, helping out, doing the best he can. Really did his part for him. Just as some other guys, just got to keep going. Big Al, he did his part as well. But you know, just got to find get those other guys better involved in the game and, and get some more points and get some more stops as well. But Brian Roberts, I really like what he brought in, brought to to him tonight. Big Al, as you said, did his job. 30 points, 13 rebounds, double double tonight. Gerald Henderson uh, with 13.7 rebounds has emerged as one of the consistent leaders. Guy who's playing hard for this team again, seems to return to his form of a couple of years ago when he was the leader of this team. Yeah, Gerald Henderson doing a really good job for him as well. He's uh, doing both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Seems like he's getting in a better groove now with Kemba out just because he's simply getting more touches. And I believe that's something that's they need to work on more when uh, Campbell comes back. Just, just get him more involved in the game, let him get some more touches because he gets a better feel for it and he gets his game going. So I, I really like what Henderson is doing for him as well. You know, this is the big thing right here was in the second half, the Indiana Pacers put up 64 points. And the, and the Hornets have been the top defensive team in the league here over the, the last several months. So, but the Hornets were outscored 64 to 46. 18 point difference because the Hornets up 17 at the point, the, the half. And again, this has been a problem that I think is reoccurring pretty much every game. The Hornets are just coming out flat in the third quarter. That was the difference last night. They had the lead at halftime or right there and came out and played a sorry third quarter. They had a sorry third quarter. And it seems like every game we say, here we go again. You know, it's going right down to the wire. And, and all of the Pacer games have gone to the wire. You know, the Pacers won up there, I think, the first time they played on a put back at the buzzer. Hornets won here in overtime last time. And in the game tonight, it's a one-point game on a shot, what, with four seconds to go. Yes, i got to give them credit. Tough veteran team without their best players still finding ways to win and and I think just for the Hornets it's just getting a little bit too relaxed 
thinking they're in, they're in right now, but they still got a lot of games left to play and got to look out because there's rumors that Paul George may come back before the end of the season. So if he comes back, the Elves guys still have a chance. You still got Detroit coming and Miami and Brooklyn. Those guys are still trying to fight for one of those top eight seeds as well. So Charlotte, they, they got to keep going because it's not over with and they can't get too relaxed because the past couple of games they've been in cruise, cruise control, but hopefully they can get it back together right before the break. Ask Coach Clifford last week after back-to-back -back wins over Washington about beating a team like that two straight times. And he said, you know, it doesn't mean anything if we don't keep our intensity up over these last three games and we lose going into the playoff break. Well, you got a team, Detroit, who you're battling with for a playoff spot right now. They come to the Hive on Tuesday night. That is going to be a crucial game. If you go into the All-Star break with three losses and then have to come back play in Oklahoma City, then you're digging that hole again that you have just gotten out of when you moved into seventh place. You're starting to dig that hole again. Yeah, it won't be a good feeling. They, I think Tuesday may be a game that they really need. I won't hate to say it's a must win because there's still a lot of games left to play, but it's one of those games that they really need to get before before the uh, before the All-Star break because after that they got Oklahoma City, Chicago, and Boston, and some other – and Dallas. On the road, on with the, exception of the Oklahoma City game. I was absolutely on the road. So they got some tough games with teams in the playoffs and teams fighting for fighting to get into the playoffs. So those next five games are going to be a tough stretch for them. So they really need to come out and win against Detroit. Well, they, they did what I thought they needed to do by coming out tonight. I was concerned after last night's disappointment, would they bounce back tonight at the old Fido, forget it and drive on. And they did. And they maintained that 15-point lead, that 15-point cushion most of the way. Uh, like I said, up 17 at the half, and they come out in the third quarter and just like that within two minutes uh, the Indiana Pacers have cut a 17 point lead to eight and that's when we said here we go again. Absolutely just watching the game you can just tell the way they kept coming back and then the Hornets will pull off and then they'll come back again and they just clawed all the way to the end they never gave up and that's why they won this game because those guys are they believed in themselves and in basketball a 20 point lead is really nothing you can get back into the game in less than five minutes and these guys just got back into it stayed calm played together as a team with chemistry as well you can see it out there tonight and that's why they pretty much came out on top with a one-point win tonight. Pacers had a lot of guys stepping up for them. Off the bench, C.J. Watson with 22 points, 15 points for David uh, West, 15 points for Rodney Stuckey. Uh, George Hill with 11 and 15 points also for Louis Scotia, who had 14 rebounds to go for that. Yeah, he did a really good job for him, which really surprised me looking at the stats that he had a double-double tonight. But he did a really good job for him, and the guy that really surprised me was C.J. Watson. I believe he was the key guy to help those guys get a win because down the stretch he played really well, made some big, shot, big shots for him, and helped those guys get a win. So. C.J. Watson and Louis Scola coming off the bench for those guys. I think those are the two key guys that helped them win tonight. That's going to do it here from the Hive tonight. The Hornets blow a 17-point lead, build it back, then turn around and blow a 21-point lead and get beat on a shot with four seconds to go, 103-102. He is Michael Jordan. <laughs> Long story, go back to the beginning of the video. He is Carlos Smith. I'm the coach Dick Cox here live from the Hive. We'll be back Tuesday with the last game for the All-Star break. Until then, good night, everybody.